Hi guys, so in this one I'm going to use my whiteboard and I'm going to try to explain something to you that happened to me. In 2009, I had a dream. It was kind of like a waking dream where all I saw was waterfalls and I was down below and I was looking up. I couldn't see over the rim. This huge amount of water coming over the falls, like Niagara Falls, if ever you've been there, it's just overwhelming. And then where the water hits the land and, and, and spreads throughout the plain. And in that dream, I immediately knew that this was the structure of what is, or reality, or God, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. What we call God, we can't see over the rim. It's totally invisible. We can't see it. We only have an idea of what's there because of what's coming over the, over the rim. And then we see the effects of what the water that's coming over the rim when it spreads throughout the land, the effects of it. And this to me was the structure of reality. It's a Trinitarian structure. What's over the rim, Christians would call God the infinite source. What's coming over is the revelation of that infinite source. Uh, what's made manifest, which we would call the Christ. And then where it hits the earth and spreads throughout the land, throughout the community, the human race, the community, is the spirit. I'll tell you, folks, when I... When that was done, I, I, I had immediate peace of mind. The, the theological struggle and angst that I'd been living in for decades was suddenly gone. It was, my mind was totally at peace and at rest, and it's been that way since, theologically speaking. Now, you know, I have stress in my life just like everybody else. I'm a human being. But theologically, this just... It just cracked. It was like the key. It cracked open the secret. It was the answer to, it just brought everything together. And it just totally made sense. And now I, I, I have perfect, complete peace of mind when it comes to that. So I just wanted to share it with you. I call it the Z theory because it's kind of shaped like a Z, okay? In Canada, we say Z, but anyway. I have an American wife, so so we'll call it the, the Z theory. So up here, this is the you know infinite source, the waterfalls, and then right. So up here, Christians would call this God, which is the infinite source. This part coming down is Jesus. The, uh, the revelation. Right? And then here at the bottom, it's the spirit. Which is the community. Or, you know, some theologically correct people might say the church. Or some might call this the incarnation. So, it was... But at the same time, I knew that this is from the Christian perspective, right? This is a Christian looking at this and how he frames or how she frames their understanding of, of reality, their structure of reality, this tri Trinitarian thing. The infinite source revealed in Jesus that is expressed through the community, okay? Well, a Buddhist would look at the same waterfalls, maybe from a different angle, and from the east, 
with, uh, you know, Tibetan, the Tibetan language and might say, this is the Buddha. The sutras, or maybe that would be Buddha nature. Buddhas. And the Sangha, what the Buddhists call community is Sangha. Right? I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the sutras. I take refuge in the Sangha. So here, this part here is the word as well, right? Jesus is the word became flesh, or the word, the sutras. What would the Jews uh, call this structure? Right? Yahweh, let's say. Um, the Torah, and the temple, or the synagogue. Right? What about a, a, a Muslim? God, or Allah? Prophet, Muhammad, and the Quran, and the temple, or the people, right? Let's really stretch this now. What would a, an atheist call this structure? Well, an atheist might say, this is the undiscovered. An atheist loves science, rationality. So this is the undiscovered up here. It's what we haven't discovered yet. It's the unseen, the unexplored. This is where it's discovered let's divide this up and then this is where it's applied okay where it's expressed right so, Christians might say the infinite source, God, Buddha nature, Yahweh, Allah, the undiscovered. Then it, the undiscovered or the unknown, right? Unknown is made known. Right? And then it's used or applied, right? Used or applied. That's basically the structure of reality, the Trinitarian. Um, so I've done that for now. Let me sit down. <clears throat> I know this is for some people, this might be, whoa, this is, you know, this is crazy. You're basically saying all roads lead to heaven or or, you know, whatever. Uh, no, I'm not. I don't believe in roads to heaven. What I, what I do believe is that we're all experiencing the same thing. We're all in the same world. We're all in the same reality. There is only one is. But each one of us is filtering it through our, our mindsets, our paradigms, maybe even our conditioning. It gets what we experience gets filtered through our minds, our brains. We make sense out of it there. And then we try to articulate and express it through our language. So that 
a Christian has his or her Christian mind, understands it a Christian way, and expresses it with Christian words. The Buddhist understands reality with the Buddhist mind and uses Tibetan words, let's say, Buddhist words. An atheist understands it scientifically, let's say, with an atheist mind and uses atheist language to describe it, non-religious language to describe this reality. Reality hasn't changed. What is still is. It hasn't changed. It only seems different because people are processing it differently and articulating it differently so that eventually it looks like we're talking about totally different worlds. But we're not. We're talking about the same world from one for from many different perspectives. So there aren't many paths leading to heaven. Instead, we're already there. <laughs> what is is. There's nothing more than now. 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 Now is the moment. Now is the fullness of time. Right now. Now is eternity. Now is affinity. You get to the point where you realize this that now is now. And what is is. And to be here now. Where there's no fear of death. For there is no death. It's just the next moment. Another moment. Another now. So when I had this dream and, you know, this whatever waking dream, I don't know even know what to call it, just revelation, and I'm not saying it was given to me by God or anything, it was just like a wow experience, an aha experience. It totally brought peace of mind. It was like, okay, I used to struggle with how can I be going to heaven and the Jews not and the Muslims not or the Buddhists not when they're better people than I am and blah, 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 blah. Now I realize... We're all talk. We're all in the same world. We're just. It's just words. It's language that seems to separate us. What a profound peace came upon me when I realized it's just our language, and our mental conditioning, and our paradigms that seem to divide and separate us. All these attempts to articulate the mystery and in a way divorces us from the reality, divorces us from uh, what is. You know, it's like Krishnamurti said, the word is not the thing. You know, God is not the thing, the word God. The Buddha is not the thing. Yahweh is not the thing. The unknown, undiscovered, that's, it's not the thing. There, what is beyond that? What is, is. When I realized that, the peace that came over me was like nothing I've ever experienced. It's something that this world can't give. <laughs> and it stayed with me. It's been seven years. No, uh, eight years now. And it stayed with me. So I want the same thing for you. I hope this helps a little bit. I, one of my goals is to write a book on this. But I find it just so overwhelming because it's hard to describe uh, what I experience and what, what I know and to put it down into words. But I hope this helps. And uh, we're going to get on to the next section. And I'll see you there. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, just uh, let me know in the comment section. Thanks.